This is one of the biggest new rail projects in Europe, and it's set to plug a major gap in the continent's high-speed network. Over 800 kilometers long and running across three countries that have lacked a modern railway since the fall of the Soviet Union, it's a scheme that's throwing up some immense challenges. As one of the EU's transport priorities over the course of this decade, the pressure's on to get it right. With spectacular engineering, advanced technology, and world-class design, this is how the Baltic states are using big infrastructure to put themselves firmly on the map. If you're a regular follower of this channel, you've likely heard of the Trans-European Transport Network, a massive EU scheme aimed at connecting member states with upgraded infrastructure, particularly rail. The Feymarn Belt Fixed Link, the Leon Turin Railway, and the Brenner Base Tunnel are all part of this ambitious project known for its scale and involving multiple countries. Now there are new players in the mix, specifically the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, comprising a significant portion of the North Sea Baltic Corridor. Despite their importance, these countries lag behind in rail infrastructure due to their history of Soviet rule which left them with outdated, poorly connected railways. To address this, they're embarking on Rail Baltica, the largest infrastructure project in the region in a century. This 870-kilometer high-speed railway will connect the Baltic states to the rest of Europe, significantly reducing travel time and promoting economic growth. The project prioritizes regional connectivity, sustainable transportation, and environmental benefits through electrification, aiming to cut CO2 emissions and reduce air pollution by over 18% compared to other transport modes. Since 2023, construction works have been ramping up, and as you can probably imagine, there's quite a lot happening. The history of Robotica goes back around 30 years ago, but today I can see that, uh, all a large part of designs are in the final stage. So we are still doing designs in all three Baltic states, but also in parallel already a couple of years are going massive construction work. Starting from the northern end of the railway, our journey begins in Ulamist, on the outskirts of Tallinn, where construction is started on a new passenger terminal designed by Zaha Hadid Architects. This terminal will serve as an international gateway to Estonia, connecting seamlessly with the country's main airport and various transportation modes like buses and trams. Excavation for the station building is underway, alongside the construction of supporting structures. In Estonia, the focus is on building new crossings, including viaducts and an ecoduct to facilitate both transportation and wildlife movement. Moving into Latvia, construction of over 200 bridges is ongoing, with trains heading towards the capital Riga or further south towards Lithuania. Riga is bustling with activity, particularly around its new station, set to be the largest passenger service hub in the Baltics. Meanwhile, work is underway on a new bridge over the Dagoval River, connecting trains to the airport. In Lithuania, preparations involve clearing former military sites and conducting geological surveys for new infrastructure, including bridges over the Dagoval River. One such bridge will accommodate both trains and cars in separate levels. Engineers are collecting samples to determine the foundation's depth for these structures. As the railway extends, it will fork towards Vilnius and Kaunas, marking significant progress in the Rail Baltica project. With a total length of 392 kilometers, Lithuania has by far the greatest share of the line. And this bridge over the Nerys River, more than one 500 meters long, is definitely one of the highlights. A huge drilling machine is being used to install 376 piles. Once it's finished making each hole, a metal framework is inserted, followed by a concrete pour. It'll take 11,500 tons of reinforcement and 74,000 cubic meters of concrete to build it. Finally, Lithuania's capital Vilnius is also getting a brand new station. Nicknamed Green Connect, their idea was for an integrated hub that again doubles up as a bridge, surrounded by nature and open public spaces. It'll have a roof made from locally sourced timber, water gardens for processing rainwater, and the integration of a heritage building from the original station. So the big question, how much is this all going to cost, and when's it going to be ready? Well, the original estimate was around USD 6 BN with a 2030 completion date. Up to 85% of the money is coming from the EU, with the rest financed by the three Baltic states. But reports in Latvia say costs have now risen to about 8 billion. It's claimed there have been delays and uncertainties with some of those sites in Riga, which could see the line bypass the city altogether when it first opens. Then there's the sheer complexity of it all. Building a railway through one country is tough enough, but when it's crossing three of them, it becomes extremely challenging. Each state has its own separate body for the project, teams are having to collaborate closely across borders, and hundreds of contracts are currently active. Kind of challenging. Sometimes we are calling each other like three brothers, sometimes cousins because not so close as our legislations are different, languages are different, and even mentality is different. But thanks to digital technology, multiple organizations have been working together seamlessly to get Rail Baltica up to speed. Based in Spain, IDEM is handling construction design and supervision for a large portion of the new line. 
IDEM's role in the Rail Baltica project has been to be responsible for the design of 389 kilometers of the Baltic Corridor. Our scope of work includes railway and road bridges, including the longest bridge in the Baltic, uh, countries. Using a number of applications from Bentley Systems, such as Project Wise and Open Buildings Designer, IDEM established a connected data environment. This allowed teams to collaborate via 3D models and detect clashes during design. The benefits of Project Wise is that it allows us to have an ultimate source of information. Uh, uh, this way everyone can have real-time access to this information and also it's always up to date, so it gives less space for errors. Despite not everything going to plan, having a system like this in place has certainly boosted the Baltic's chances of having a high-speed rail line up and running before the end of the decade. For years, the Baltic states have been crying out for a railway to match the rest of Europe, and the early signs are that it will have been worth the wait. Of course, it hasn't been straightforward. These projects never are, especially when there's so much at stake. But like so many of the other big infrastructure projects happening across the continents, the three main countries won't be the only ones set to gain. It's part of a much bigger picture with a missing piece that's now being slotted into place. This video was sponsored by Bentley Systems. You can learn more about that at the link below. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the Super Build.